Guys, welcome back to another week of 3SSR Footy TV. I'm John Nunho here again with Peter Seros. Uh, another great week of footy, wasn't it, Pete? And it was all, uh, all made all the more better by the Mighty Saints winning. It, it, not, not for me, but for <laughs> you. Um, it was a great win all round. Um, I suppose uh, for all the games, it was pretty close. We thought it was going to be a soft sort of week, and it, uh, turned, it turned out to out be, out to be a, a really, really good, good week. Yeah, really all, good all the games are fantastic. Well, it all started off on Friday night with a with an upset of sorts when you know North Melbourne were touted to win this and win this easily, and Carlton came out of the blocks firing, and you know North Melbourne obviously got back into it, but Carlton were too good in the end, and you know Carlton they're they're hovering over that you know twelfth thirteenth position, probably won't make finals, but you know. If they can get get going a little bit, they can get close. That's right. Um, they're close-ish, but I don't think... They could be. finish ninth. Finish in Richmond's oh, I, position. I, yeah, well, Richmond's going for that at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we can move on. Uh, we'll move, your favourite we'll, we'll match of the week. On. We'll move on. St Kilda and, uh, and Freo. Greatest game I've, I've seen in a while. <laughs> Nick Rewalt, 30 disposals, four goals. Shane Savage, 30 disposals. Um, just an all-round good performance for St. Kilda, uh, from St Kilda. One of the and they only... did it for Lenny Hayes. It was it was about Lenny Hayes this week, yeah. and uh, they really really turned it on for him. That's right. And one of the only uh, highlights you guys actually have as St Kilda supporters, you got the 1966 grand final. Yeah. And this and that's that's well, that's, that's, what, that's about that's it. why I'm so Robert up, Harvey that's why well, I'm so, so up and about you got to take what you can get you know you got to take a win when it comes and and you know we're winners for the next week anyway so we've got two weeks where we don't lose that's right so, so you know I don't classify it as two weeks of winning but it's two weeks without losing <laughs> but let's hope look I'm, I'm I'm being a bit selfish here saying look I want St Kilda to get the pick one uh, so we'll hope that Brisbane kind of gets a win against the Gold Coast or uh, yeah they don't lose by too much because I wouldn't mind St Kilda getting pick one because there's a few good players out there that's right uh, we'll move on GWS uh, put up a really good fight against Geelong up there in Western Sydney uh, Geelong too classy in the end. Always too classy. A few uh, former cats played very well against GW uh, against their former side with GWS. That is, uh, Josh Hunt and Shane Mumford played fantastic. Shane Mumford's a really good recruit. He has been a great yeah. recruit. Uh, great recruit for Sydney when he left Geelong as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, good match by GWS. I tipped the Giants. To, I think to win, didn't I? I think he did. I, I didn't I, get I, too. I, I didn't up about really. It. I didn't really understand it at the time, but look, you've—I'll <laughs> admit you've had too some bad. Good, you've had some good results over the last few weeks. I mean, I, I scorned you when you tipped uh, Brisbane. That's and, right. And two they, weeks they in ended a row, up, they ended up winning two in a row. So, um, what would I know? But I'm I'm still beating you quite easily in tipping. I would I would assume probably. But I think <laughs> I think both of us probably only got about one or two this week. Yeah, didn't out get of five. That many. Um, so yeah, but I mean, generally, yeah, some good players. Obviously, they've got the uh, the triple threat up there. I think personally, one of them will come back, and I think it'll be Jeremy Cameron. I think Tom Boyd and jo- John O'Patton will stay up there. Um, a team like St Kilda might be able to ship off pick or, uh, one pick may- one to Jedo. Maybe Richmond for, could take on uh, Jonathan Batten. I wouldn't mind that. Well, why would they take on Jonathan Patton when they got um, Jack Rewalt firing so so well? Don't be selfish, mate. I want to be selfish. <laughs> but no, we'll see. We'll see how that all plays out at the end of the year. Obviously, Jeremy Cameron out for the year with an ankle injury, which is uh, very unfortunate news. Mm. Uh, we'll move on to Sunday's game. Port Adelaide haven't been in the greatest fo- greatest of form of late, and Dom Cassisi, uh this was his last game in Port Adelaide Colours. They, they only won by three points, and full credit to Melbourne. Uh, they were seriously good. They piled on five goals. I think it was there in the third quarter. Um, and got themselves back into it, but couldn't couldn't get the job done in the end. But look, there were, there were some pretty good performances on the day. Dom Tyson's a star. Mm. He's been a fantastic recruit from Melbourne. I reckon he's one of the recruits of the year. They only did just lose by three points. Uh, Bernie Vince has been another recruit for them as well. Mm, absolutely. And another game that finished under 10 points. It was three games that finished under 10 points in the round, which is unheard of. Um, the the Bombers and the Western Bulldogs eight goals to Jake Carlisle he's hit a f- bit of form and he probably at the moment he's probably the best player in the comp the best performing player in the competition uh, I reckon the best forward in the comp not necessarily the best player in the comp uh, is he a chance for all Australian I think it's a definite good good uh, tip for all Australian I don't think he is because of his early season form he was he was out of form a little bit early on. Um, you, know, you also never know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you can't tell. You, you can't, can't tell really tell. Things. A few years back, Jack Revolt led the Coleman, won the Coleman. That's true. That's didn't true. win all Australian, so you, you don't really know. That's true. Uh, this week's game. So obviously it was a split round. There was only five five games last week. There'll be five again this week. Sorry, four again this week. Uh, and your Good mob math skills. Your, thanks, mate. Your mob <laughs> kicking off on uh, on Friday night in Perth against West Coast. Do you give him any chance here? I I think it can go either way, but I still think West Coast will just win. Yeah, you're sitting on the fence a bit though. Sitting of late, on the fence. of late. Oh, yeah. 
Because uh, you don't really know with Richmond's form. They've been up and down. They've won three in a row, and then West Coast haven't been that great. So Yeah, I think for Do- uh, for Dean Cox, a bit like St Kilda, I think West Coast will lift for Dean Cox. Um, yeah, star love, of the game. They love, now- the, they love the Cox down there. <laughs> Grow up, mate. He's a star of the game who uh, announced his retirement during the week after 284 games. Oh. He'll get to 293 or something like that. It's the last uh, time I can make that a joke six, as well. Six-time, All Austra- <laughs> six-time All-Australian Premiership player for the West Coast Eagles. Off the rookie list, he's uh, he's a very good player and uh, he'll be sorely missed at West Coast. He will because they love the cops. They'll- this bloke, uh, grow up. We'll move on. <laughs> Your favourite team to tip: Brisbane and Gold Coast uh, at the Gabba on Saturday night, uh, Saturday afternoon. Who's winning this? Gold Coast need a need a bounce back after a poor performance last week. They they did perform poorly. They need to show that they could play without Ablett. They have got good players in Prestia, Omera, Jack Martin, Benell, Swallow running through that midfield. I think they can win. I think they can as well. Um, Obviously, Brisbane have put up a gallon effort all year, uh, mid-year, and they've, they've beaten some of the best sides in the comp. Uh, but I think I think the Gold Coast have a bit to prove, um, right. and a, a seriously good side in the making. And I think they'll um, they'll come out really, really well and play really well. Uh, game of the round, Buddy Franklin returns home to play against his old side. Hawthorne are taking on Sydney. Game of the round, could it be the grand final preview? I think it is, and uh, you know my thoughts about the Swans. I, I think they're unstoppable. I agree. I think uh, it's going to be the grand final preview. I can't see. I don't know. It's a tough one, but I, I think Hawthorne could win if they go out there to their be- play their best for you. Yeah, and uh, Josh, Sydney... Josh Gibson returns as well to play on Buddy Franklin, so that's a big in for the Hawks. Uh, look, Sydney are chasing thirteen wins in a row, and it's never been done in Sydney before. So, you know, they've got, they've got a bit of pressure on their shoulders in that sense as well. They they do. I still think. Um, I think Hawthorne will win. I think the Swans. I think the midfield at Sydney. Josh Kennedy, Hannes comes back in. Uh, you know, Malcheski going through the midfield. Their back line, their midfield, their forward line. I can't find a fault in any of them. Uh, so I think the Swannies are going to win. They're, they're the ultimate team. They keep going every year. Um, I cannot find a fault in them at all. So uh, and a big, a crucial game for both sides now on Sunday afternoon. Collingwood and Adelaide at the MCG. Okay. Both sides need a win to keep their finals hopes alive. If Collingwood lose this, they go out of the eight. Adelaide win, they go in the eight. I tip the Crows only because last time round the Crows won quite comfortably against the Maggies and they haven't been at the best of form this year. So, I agree. Uh, of late. So I, I think uh, the Crows will win. I agree. I think the Crows, um, they've, hit, they've hit some form at the right time of the year. Tex Walker coming back in the mm. sides really helped them. Um, they're moving They're moving quite nicely. Dangerfield's finding some form, some form. Sloan's a really good player. That's right. Um, Scotty Thompson will be back from a hamstring this week as well. So, look, I think... The Pies, they've been found out a little bit of late. Um, they've been, you know, although they could come out this week and absolutely pummel them. The Crows beat them a few weeks ago. Um, I just think the Crows might sneak into that last spot in the eight. Uh, and unfortunately, Collingwood might miss out. But who knows? You know, footy's a funny game. We saw that last week. Mm. Um, and you never know. But, yeah, no. I'm agreeing you got, with you. you. I'm agreeing else? with you. I think uh, Madeleine's going to win. And I think they're yeah. going to... I think Collingwood are going in there as the favourites at the moment. So, mm. it's interesting. But... You, know, you, you don't really know. There's uh, three sides still pushing for a top eight spot with the teams currently in the eight. So yeah, you're not wrong. It's going to be an interesting final. Well, that's, that's all we got for you this week. Obviously, a split round. And uh, just remember to tune in on Thursday mornings as well on Sin. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a new radio show this week in football. Thursday mornings, 9 till 10 a.m. It's, uh, it's bound to be fun. This bloke's right. a clown. Yep. Doesn't know what to do uh, on the panel. So you'll hear, uh, you'll hear a lot of interesting stuff going on. All but, the updates on the Cox News. But we'll still, we'll still be doing this YouTube. All the news. We'll still be doing this YouTube channel every week as well. There's, so uh, there's keep, a lot of cocks keep tuning radio. in before exactly. this bloke gets out of out of control. <laughs> I'm John Donahoe, he's Peter Saros. Till next week, see you later.